G'day and welcome to another episode of the AFL Riverina Football and Netball Show. We've got another cracking edition for you again this week. We're talking all things rep games from the weekend, both the Farrah League and the Riverina in their representative games. We'll be discussing junior football and netball ahead of their carnival in Griffith this Saturday. And we'll be looking at another huge round of footy in both the Farrah and Riverina leagues this weekend. Let's get stuck straight into it. We're going to kick things off by talking about all things junior football and netball ahead of the representative carnival this Saturday in Griffith. I'm now joined by Wagga District Junior Football and Netball League President Stephen Stapleton. Stephen, thanks for joining us. What's the format of this Saturday's carnival? Uh, well, this, <coughs> this Saturday sees the, uh, the fourth year of, of um, Wagga District Junior Footballers playing against the South West Footballers. We also have the, the inclusion of netball for the first time this year. Um, Games kicking off with the netball and the football at 10.30 in the morning. Um, we see under 11s, 13s and 15s in netball and under 12s, 13s, 14s and 15s in the football. And just how long has this junior representative program been running? This is the fourth year for football and it's the, uh, the first year we've trolled the netball. Netball um, participation rates have gone through the roof so we, uh, we've had to incorporate netball in as well. Uh, now we're in Griffith this Saturday. How has the venue been determined? Uh, the venue swaps between a Wagon District uh, venue and a South West venue. Last year it was held at uh, Mar Oval and then this year um, South West have elected to hold the games at, at Griffith. And uh, who are the uh, Wagga District Junior Football and Netball League coaches? Uh, Alicia O'Donoghue is coaching the under 11s, Sonia Buchanan is coaching the under 13s and Janine Fitzsimmons is doing the under 15s. And with the, senior fo with the footballers we've got Brian Buchanan coaching the 12s. Uh, John Anderson coaching the 13s, Rick Fitzsimmons is coaching the 14s, and Matt Carroll's coaching the 15s. Okay, so quite a, um, an interesting bunch there uh, of coaches. Uh, I'm wondering your expectations of the Wagga District Junior Football and Netball League football and netball teams uh, that are in this year uh, in the representative matches, how you think they're going to go? I think they should perform uh, very, very well. They, uh, they dominated the football last year. Um, having said that, South West dominated the year before that, so it sort of goes in swings and roundabouts. We, we'd, be we'd be hopeful that our, that our boys will be um, at the least very competitive. And likewise with the girls in the netball, I think the, the um, coaches have picked strong squads and, and we'll look forward to seeing how it goes. There's going to be uh, plenty of young talent in both the football and the netball, no doubt. Let's hope for some... Uh some good weather in Griffith on Saturday and best of luck to, uh, to all the boys and girls that are competing. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Matt. Representative footy was the order of the weekend. I'm joined by Shane Buchanan. Shane, let's discuss the Riverina rep game first up. Uh, the boys really had to dig deep late in the last quarter to get over the line. They did, uh, Matt. There's no doubt about that. They put a, a uh, well, they put a strong effort in, I suppose, and in the end they got over the top, I suppose, the... Uh, the thing with Sydney was they were they were a quick team. There was no doubt about that. Um, at times, Riverina played really well, did move the ball really well, especially in the third quarter, um, but didn't probably do it consistently enough to um, to uh, to put a better result in, I suppose. But anyway, the boys got over the line. I uh, I want to touch on the uh, the defenders first off. I thought uh, I mentioned in my story last night on Prime Seven we had uh, John Anstey had a really good battle in defence, and I thought Murray Stevenson as well. Two uh, two. Two boys uh, in the uh, the back fifty that perhaps set up the play on numerous occasions. Oh, they were. They're both good, and both boys aren't. You know, they're only in their early twenties as well, sort of thing. So I mean, they're going to be key players for the league for a number number of years. Um, John Enstey, I think, it's maybe his second year or third year. He's actually represent, represented the league and done a really good job. And he had a great battle with the Sydney opponent that he had, and um, was probably a fifty fifty in the end that one. I was really impressed as well. With uh, we spoke to Troy Maiden on the Footy Show. Last week, uh, I was really impressed with the way he went about it, the way he spoke to the boys. I was in close in the huddle at quarter time. Half time, uh, they were under a bit of pressure. Of course, you, you mentioned, as you mentioned before, the uh, the Sydney development side got on top out wide. I thought they used the, the far wing uh, to their advantage. Their pace was a real standout. And at half time, and they came out in the second half, and things changed. And and clearly that was to to do with how the uh, the coaches approached that half time break. Yeah, they made some changes. I mean, moved Chris Gordon up to the forward line. Uh, was one notable uh, change that they made. I think they uh, 
more accountability and more intensity at the footy. Uh, let's win the footy and then get it out wide themselves and then try and expose Sydney. Sydney were very good on the spread, there was no doubt about that. And perhaps, um, yeah, maybe a few River Rooney boys weren't probably more account should have been maybe more accountable at times during the game. But anyway, they got over the line and that's all that counts. And we saw that in the third quarter. Uh, I mean, talk me through Jim Rice's game and, and well supported by Jaden Kotzer as well. Yeah, I suppose that last quarter, I suppose, when the chips were down, I suppose that's when you're looking for the leaders to, to um, come to the occasion. And I think um, Jimmy Rice did that in the last quarter. Another one was J Jamie Maddox, just doing the little things, getting to a contest all the time, getting the ball out. Also Guy Orton working very hard there as well. And even key marks, I thought, in the forward line as well. Lou Roberts took a critical mark as well. Uh, Mark Geppert uh, took a, a vital mark as well. Missed, a, missed an opportunity there to kick a goal, but I mean, they're the type of players that the coaches, no doubt, Troy Maiden was looking forward to lead from the front, and that was um, represented by Jim Rice himself winning, the, being the best on ground for Riverina. And of course, their form throughout that game, no doubt, uh, we'll see most of, if not all of those players uh, have a, a huge second half of the season. We look forward to uh, to seeing those boys and all the boys in the second half of the year in the Riverina League. Now, the Farrah game, which was on first at 11 o'clock, Another cracking game here. Didn't really get out to any more than a goal most of the day. Uh, I was really impressed with a couple of the forwards in this game. I thought Mick Foster was pretty good and uh, he was well supported by Mitch Ward who took a couple of nice marks and kicked plenty of goals as well. Yeah, the margin during the whole day I think was 10 points. R uh, Farrow would kick a goal, then Black Diamond would kick another one straight away and that was the challenge I think for the coaches and even the playing group was trying to stop that goal getting scored and then trying to get some scoreboard pressure against them. You're right, in the forward line um, uh, Mick Foster I think kicked four out of the 10 goals so I mean he's had a fairly uh, big impact on the game as well. Um, probably just the little things, I suppose, and they're the little things that are probably in the big games that are vital. You know, some drop marks at these times where boys were under him, you think he's going to mark this, and just dropped it. And probably the other notable thing I thought in the game was um, a few of the Farrah boys, maybe they get away from home and away, you know, maybe caught on their wrong foot sort of thing, and they come back inside, and Black Dime were all over them sort of thing. So obviously the boys would have learned a lot out of that particular game. Yeah, uh, in particular, I thought the one percenters, there was, I, I noticed a couple of times there was. Uh, some heavy blocks, plenty of shepherds um, and, and a couple of smothers as well. I know Gerald Peeper did mention that last week, that that was one thing he was really focusing on throughout the group. And with rep footy, I suppose, Matt, it's those type of things, but it's also the other thing is that when you get the footy, you're playing rep footy, it's quicker and whatever else. You've got to do the first thing that comes in your mind. You can't do the old jig and try and get out of it like you do on home and away. And perhaps that's a lot of the boys learned. You do the first thing that comes into your head, and if it's the wrong thing, well, you live with that. So, But they should be proud of how they uh, contested the game. It was a really good close battle. As it was two years ago between those two teams, it was a ripper of a game. Yeah, of course. A, a tough result for the Farrah League, who did uh, play some impressive footy throughout their four-quarter game against the Black Diamond. Hopefully next time uh, in their representative game, the result goes their way. Another huge weekend of footy this weekend coming up. Shane Buchanan is still with me. We're going to start with the Farrah League this weekend, Shane. Huge game, tomorrow versus Northern Jets. How do you see it? Oh, look, this will be a fantastic game. Uh, the Jets got over tomorrow in the first round. Uh, tomorrow will be on the rebound after that. There's no doubt about that. They're at home. I'll go with tomorrow to get over the Jets. Now, the Rock haven't lost a game so far this season. Whether they're due or not, that's arguable. Let's uh, have a look at... They've got Mara this weekend at home. Can we see their first loss for the year here or will they continue on their winning way? Look, arch rivals, I don't think so. The Rock form's been too good. I mean, uh, they're rolling along nicely. Dale Hugo might have picked up an injury from the rep footy on the weekend, but, uh, look, I can't go past the Rock. Now, North Wagga take on Collie Amberley. Both sides here would be pretty keen for a win and confident that they can get it. How North, do you say it? Yeah, North Wagga haven't had a win yet, so they'll be as keen as mustard. Um, look, I might go with them at home against Collie Amberley. And East Wagga, Karingal versus CSU. The Hawks' form of late hasn't been too bad. Do we expect they'll get a win here? CSU need to win this, Matt. If they want to play finals, it's as easy as that, but I don't think they will. I think East Wagga's form hasn't been too bad and they'll get over the Bush Bigs. Now, probably the biggest game for the year in the RFL. We've got 1v2, again, main playing at home, hosting Coolerman. Uh, what do we think here? Two biggest artist rivals in local footy. There'll be a massive crowd at this game. Uh, it should be fantastic. Looking for a winner here. Um, look, it's at home uh, with Gamain. I might go with Gamain at home. You think uh, midfield battle the key to this uh, this game? I oh, will be. There's no doubt. I mean, uh, and that was uh, reflected in the representative team. I mean, Coolman and Gamain made up a strong contingent in that team. You know, the likes of um, Cohagen, uh, Kotzer. Um, Steele up against Maddox, um, Chamberlain, etc. It should be really good, and that's going to be a highlight. There's no doubt about that. And probably that's where Matt, the game's going to be won and lost. 
and perhaps I just think Gare Main. I mean, their uh, their form hasn't been too bad at home. I think they might just get over the hoppers. Uh, a possibility that we may see these two sides playing off in the grand final later in the year. Not a done deal yet by any means. We have Turvey Park playing at home, taking on Colin Gully. Uh, any chance the Bulldogs here for an upset? No, I don't think so. Colin Gully, they're travelling along nicely. I mean, they'll consolidate. Uh, they're in the top three now. They won't let this game slip. Uh, the third game for the round, Mangapla hosts Griffith at home. It's an interesting game. I mean, Griffith probably need to win it. Uh, the biggest road trip of the year for the Griffith uh, boys coming uh, all the way to Mangapla. But I think Mango, they're going all right. Their form hasn't been too bad. Probably should have won some games that they've dropped, but um, I think uh, they'll get over the Swannies, I think. I think Mango probably look at this game as one they should win. So in terms of making the finals, they, this is the four points that they really need to get. Uh, fourth and final game for the round, uh, Wagga Tigers take on Leighton Witten. Uh, Tigers, another team in some pretty good form. Um, how do we expect they'll go? Yeah, they'll go well. I mean, they've got to run, I think, four or five home games now. So I think they'll consolidate their season in the next four or five weeks by playing a lot of games at home, and they'll get over the, the Crowies this weekend. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, Shane Buchanan's tips for this weekend. Narendra have the bye in the Riverina League. Some huge games from both leagues this weekend, so make sure you get out and support the boys. Well, that's pretty much all we have time for for this week's episode. Make sure you join us next week. We'll have... A number of players from the GWS Giants, boys that grew up and played football in the Riverina. They'll give us their tips on next weekend's games. As for this weekend, best of luck to your team. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for joining us.